peel the paper off them entirely because what this gets you to do is you draw with the entire piece of crayon. You don't just draw with the tip. Most people just draw here, but you wanna draw with the side, you wanna draw with the back. And another thing that I do too is I'll take the crayon in the beginning and I'll just even out the side because if I do this, I, I get a really uneven mark. And so what I'm just doing here is just smoothing out the edge of the crayon so I can get really nice, soft edges of tone like this. And so now the crayon, it's a little bit more broken in. And so now if I show you guys down here, see how nice and smooth that tone is? It's like that because I took the time to do this. So this is a really good thing to do if you guys decide to use crayon. Okay, let's get going. We're gonna do some five minute poses. I think probably what I'll do is maybe do two per page because I don't tend to like to draw that small. I find it a little bit constrictive. All right, so let's get started with the pose. And if you guys watched my tutorials on portrait drawing, you'll know that facial features are not that important in the very beginning. That actually it's the bony structures that you guys want to start to analyze. Bummer, I can't see his ears in this. That would actually be really helpful right now, but oh well. Okay, and also that the mass of the hair, very important to include his awesome jacket. I love his jacket. His jacket looks so good. By the way, tell me in the chat if you guys have watched Sherlock before or if you're one of those shameful people that have not watched it because it's like, oh my God, it's so good. It never gets worse. There are definitely shows that I'm like worried about watching too much because I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna ruin it if I <laughs> watch it too many times. This is not one of them. I'm like, it's always good. Like every time I watch it, it's amazing. Okay. So everything gets in here, even like the mass of the hair like this. His hair doesn't look so great in this one, but I'm just approximating. And now I'm gonna go in and try to build up the eye sockets, the brow, and I'm not trying to put in details, no nostrils. He looks very startled and his mouth is a little bit weird and too big looking. And his face is like, I don't know, I feel like he's really elongated in this portrait. It's a really strange, I mean, I don't know, he always looks weird. But that, that's part of the attraction. I don't know. I think people who are known as being beautiful are sort of strange looking. I don't know how to explain that, but I, I definitely feel like that is the case. So these creases on the side help you show his cheekbones and he's got great cheekbones. Oh my God. If you guys want to learn how to draw your zygomatic arch, just look at that. It's so good. Okay, so let's make some adjustments. Now with the mouth, I'm more concerned with these pockets that are on the side of his mouth and also the chin, which is down here. And now even at this early stage, I'm gonna block in a little bit of the shadow here, just to say, okay, there's some tone. And then with the hair even, I'm gonna just, like this is a really large shape on this side. And then there's like a chunk here and then here. And with the hair, you just try to put together like a hierarchy. Like you say, okay, this is more dramatic. Okay, now let's give him some of these amazing raccoon eye sockets, clarify some of the nose. I'm barely gonna do anything with the eyes. It, there's not really time for that. I only have like two minutes left, but I am gonna try to get the brow in there. And, and really guys, the emphasis right now cheekbones okay and you have no excuse because i know you can see his cheekbones no chance that you're not going to see that maybe some lighting on the nose starting to warm up but i still don't feel great just yet but i am getting excited because you know i woke up this morning and i was like oh my god i can't wait to draw that if anything <laughs> that's what i like about these dreams it's like i i have to draw i can't be like oh i don't feel like it it's a really good excuse for me to build it into my schedule because I don't always, there's oftentimes other things that seem like they're more important. So it's easy for me to put drawing aside, but when I have to do these streams, it's very much for me, it's a relief that this is something that I can't get out of. Isn't that strange? It's like, this is the thing that we love so much 
yet sometimes we're trying to get out of it or making excuses for why we can't do it or why we have to do something else. Okay, this definitely got like way bigger <laughs> than I was expecting to. But you know something, I do think I scale. It's a personal thing. I tend to draw much better when I'm drawing bigger. I just find that if I draw too small, I feel very constricted. I feel like I can't move around so much. Okay, if anything, let's just get a little bit more at his nose. And he's got all this ew, yucky facial hair. I don't like it when he has facial hair. It does not look good. Maybe that's why I didn't like Doctor Strange that much. I mean, I like the movie. The movie's fine. I'm just saying he didn't look that great in that movie. Plus that American accent, not good. Like what a waste. That makes me really sad to like perfectly beautiful British accent, totally wasted on American superhero. That makes me pretty sad. Okay, so this is again, this is a warm up, not trying to impress anybody right now. Not important guys. Right now, it's all about bony structure and getting things in place. Okay, there it is. I guess I can't do two faces per page. So I think the next one, I'm just gonna go right into the middle because it seems like that's gonna work out a lot better. Okay, not happy, but who cares? move on. Let's just do another one. Okay, here we go. Let's see what's up next. Oh, I really like this one. <laughs> He's just, he looks so soft. He's like glowing. It's really, really nice. Okay, let's do another one. All right, and tell me in the chat, I know I can't talk to you right this second, but I'm going to talk to you after a few poses. Tell me what you're observing. Tell me, does Benedict look more like an alien or a duck in my drawing, whichever one I'm closer to, or maybe a goose. But maybe that's just because I'm thinking about Lauren, another art prof, teaching artist. Okay, here we go. Let's start five minute pose. Again, still warming up guys. Okay, I'm gonna put this one in the middle and actually, you know what? Let's make this one nice and big. And I am ready to go. So cheekbones, chin, perfect neck. Oh, such a nice suit. I love it when he's in a suit. Like the suits that I am wearing are like, so good. And this like dark purple. Oh my God. Like whoever outfitted him for that show. Such a good job. Okay. And I love his hair. Oh my God. Like I just don't like his regular hair. He's fine. I just, I really like his Sherlock hair. <laughs> okay. Let's get in the shape of the nose. Eye sockets, which are way more important than the eyes. A lot of you guys think it's about the eyes. It's not about the eyes. You can't have eyes if you don't have an eye socket. It's not happening. Now for the mouth, I always do is a line that goes in between the lips. I don't actually try to trace the lips. What I do try to show is like the chin, which is underneath here. And now let's get in the shape of the chin. And you know, this one, I actually am gonna add a little bit of the background because he has this like super dramatic lighting on him. So it's a little bit hard to avoid doing that. And then let's just get in some bulk of the hair. Yes, it's a mess. Yes, I know, too bad. If you don't like it, I don't care. Okay, yeah, he's a little long right now. Oh dear. Okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, I made the mistake. <laughs> of looking at my drawing and I should not, I should look at him more. All the information is up there on my screen. It's not here. So for those of you guys who are staring at your drawings and analyzing, don't do that. Okay. Just look at the structure, look at the forms and that is what's going to help you. It's not going to be all that picking and all that judgment. Okay. All right. Let's get in his suit. Oh, he's really flat right now. Ooh, that just made it worse. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is what I'm going to do. This is a mess. I know, I know, but I'm going to block in this huge shadow. Does everybody see this shadow? It's really dramatic. So this shadow goes like this and it comes down and it goes through the face. And yes, I know you all think I'm crazy because I'm like canceling out everything that I just did, but I am trying to nail the mass of his head and I guess the ear is like about here. So the ear is not a bony landmark and you guys have probably heard me talk about this before, but it is a landmark. It is really, really helpful to place the ear so you know where everything else is. Okay, so let's block in 
get his suit a little bit more dramatic. So this is what happens a lot is you put down features, you get rid of them, and then you put them back. So let's do that now. Okay, so let's get in the eye sockets. I'm going to block in more of the mouth because the mouth is not happening. Let's get in the chin. This is what I talked to you guys earlier about that rug of tone that you're trying to put in. And I'm very much a tonal person. I, I'm not very good at lines. If you guys want to be good at lines, go talk to Jordan McCracken Foster. He's doing a 2,500 drawing challenge. For some of you guys who are in the Discord, maybe you've seen him posting about that. And I would join, guys. That That's a hardcore art dare that they're working on, which is really fun. And he has people only doing line. So if you want to get better at line, talk to Jordan. He's really good at it. I am not that great at line. So that that is an advantage, I think, to the fact that we have so many different artists working here at Art Prof. Okay, it's time to really get moving because I I'm still, this really is, you guys, how many of you guys feel like this is like athletics where you're just like running around the track, getting ready for your soccer game, whatever it is that you're playing. I never played soccer. I always played volleyball. Volleyball was my thing. Okay. So let's block in more specifics. And now I'm losing his hair. So let's get that in. Oh, 27 seconds. Ugh. Okay, this, this drawing looks like crap. It looks so bad. Oh my God, it's such a disaster. Like I barely, barely got the forms in here. I mean, they're here. If you look hard for them, you might see something that slightly resembles a nose. But that's okay. That's, ugh. Oh man, this looks terrible. All right, there we go. Okay, let me take a quick break and I'll see what you guys are saying in the chat. So let me switch gears and see what you guys are saying. Because you know something, as hard as my week has been, I already feel better. I really do. <laughs> because it's nice to just put everything aside and just focus on you guys. Okay, let's see what people are saying. Cool, I'm so glad that you guys understand the importance, not just of the bony structure, which we're gonna be talking about, but the lighting. So many people, oftentimes they want me to critique their work and they show me the reference photo, they show me the drawing, especially a lot of you guys who are in the Discord, you know that I'm always talking to you about this stuff. But by the way, if you're not in the Discord, just join, come on, the cool kids are all doing it. And the light and the shadows, sometimes they're just not there and you can't do anything about that. No matter how good of an artist you are, you cannot fix crummy lighting in your reference photos. So really make sure that you guys get into that. Okay, let's see, W315 says he looks like an alien in real life. Okay, fair. So maybe you could say that if I make him look like an alien, I'm doing a great job. <laughs> and Annie says, you know, when it starts big, it's gonna get out of control. It is, but you know something, Annie, I like living on the edge. I, I don't, like as an artist being a hundred percent in control because i think that if you are a hundred percent in control that you're not leaving a lot of options available and i like having those options now does everybody see here portrait mistake number two which is in the video if you guys go back and look at it starting with the eyes nose and mouth and you guys can notice that in those two sketches I did, you did not really see the eyes, nose, and mouth. There was way more emphasis on the bony structures. So if you guys haven't seen this video, I'm just gonna give you the quick and dirty overview. What you're really looking for in a portrait, you're looking for the eye sockets. They matter way more than the pupil, which is usually what everybody draws first. And you look for the cheekbone, if you want to be a big dork, call it the zygomatic arch. The ear is very important. It's not bony, it's cartilage, but it's a great locator. And then the jawbone, which is known as the mandible. You guys nailed those parts of the face. The eyes, nose, and the mouth, just going to drop them in. 
They're going to be so easy for you guys to put into your pieces. So really prioritize everything but the eyes, nose, and mouth. Ingress is saying, Clara, do you ever draw cartoons? I really don't. But you know something? Ever since I started doing all these character design discussions with Kat and Jordan, who are two other art prop teaching artists, it really makes me want to do it. It's just it really, it's a matter of headspace and time because I just don't have any. <laughs> Let's see. What else people are saying? Rihanna is drawing with her dog in her lap. Very cool. Haley is saying drawing has been my quarantine workout. Well, that's good because uh, I have not been working out <laughs> as much as I used to and I really need this. Let's see. Natalie is saying what supplies I am using. Okay, so what I'm using right now, just because I'm warming up, I'm using rough newsprint. I don't like the smooth newsprint. I feel like you can't see the marks as well. And I'm also using Caran d'Ache Neocolor Crayon, which, by the way, you cannot erase. And that is on purpose, because I just find for a lot of people, the eraser becomes a crutch when they're doing gesture drawing and they tend to fuss too much. And when you draw with someone you can't erase, then you end up really having to deal with your marks. Later on, when I get to the longer drawing, I am going to switch to charcoal paper. But for now, I'm going to just stick with newsprint. Jay Leaf says, mine looks like Bruce Jenner. <laughs> Let's see. Although I thought Bruce Jenner was going by Caitlin now. Anyway, I can't keep track of everybody's names. Ellie Castano is saying, do you recommend that we draw ourselves in mirrors rather than from pictures? I think, Ellie, it's a really good grounding to draw lots and lots of self-portraits. Because for one thing, you're always there. You're never going to turn yourself down. And you can just really take your time drawing the portrait. Because even with a photo, I feel that there's a limitation because you can't zoom in and zoom out the way you can when you look at a mirror. But also, you guys would not believe how many self-portraits I did in art school. And it wasn't because I'm vain or anything like that. In fact, I feel like it was torture looking at myself for that long. But I really, really learned a lot. So yeah, if you can, Ellie, do as many of those as you can. It's going to make you a lot better. Scott says, my phone camera recognized them as faces, so I count that as a small victory. That, that's how we should measure our success as portrait artists, is can your phone pick it up as a face? That's really hilarious. Neek Steins is saying... I'm a beginner. My shadows on the face oftentimes look like a dirty face as opposed to shadow any suggestions. Okay, well, a lot of it, Nick, Nick, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say your name. A lot of it has to do with the edges and the types of shadows. Because if you guys watch this light and shadow tutorial, I explain the difference between a form shadow and a cast shadow. And a lot of people don't really take the time to distinguish between the two. So if you do that, that will help you quite a bit. Brewer hasn't drawn for three months. Now you motivate me and I do. Fabulous. Guys, the most important thing here about drawing is that you do it. Who cares if it's crappy? I just did two freaky drawings of Benedict and I feel a little bit um, crummy about it, but who cares? <laughs> Let's just do another one. That's really not a big deal. Tom Cuke says starting with the nose is really helpful. It's a good landmark. Yeah, you know what else is nice, Tom Cuke, about the nose is that it's right in the middle. And so it's similar to the torso in that it is connected to everything else. So in my opinion, if you start with the eyes, that's tougher because the eyes are at the top of the head and then you got to go head, nose, mouth. Whereas if you go nose, mouth, head, it just makes a lot more sense. All of this, guys, is about relationships. Screw those silly measuring things where people say the human body is a bean or look at the figure as a series of cubes. I'm like, there's no cubes. Where are they? <laughs> like, show me the cubes in Benedict's face. Like, I don't see the cubes. <laughs> they don't exist. So draw what you see and draw the relationships and look at the eyes in relation to the nose. That's how you guys are going to learn how to do all of this stuff. 
All right. Benjamin says, I also want to do a portrait. Haven't done one since middle school, which was the tail end of the last century. <laughs> well, hopefully at this stage in our lives, those of us who are older than 13 have, have somewhat gotten over some of that middle school self-consciousness. <laughs> I hope. I don't know. It's a very tricky thing. You can't do, you guys, a self-portrait without getting deep. I mean, if you look at yourself for that long, you can't not deconstruct yourself in some way. But I do think it's pretty interesting. Let's see. Real Buns Kanzler. I have a problem because I'm feeling bad when not drawing. If I draw, I'm really lazy. I don't really want to. You know what, you guys? Put on a podcast or put on something that has some story that you have to actually follow and pay attention to. I actually listen to a lot of stand-up comedy because it's really funny and I just really enjoy it a lot. And sometimes that just takes your mind a little bit off of the ruminating because I definitely do that. I ruminate if I don't have something else to follow. Saren is saying when you do figure portrait drawings, is it better to do quick drawings with time limits like 30 minutes? Is it better to try and attain a certain level of finish without timing? I think you got to do both. My whole feeling about figure and portraits, you have to train yourself to be versatile. You cannot be somebody who can only do gesture drawings and you shouldn't say, oh, well, I need 50 hours or I can't get anything done. You should be able to do all of it. Learn how to do a two minute drawing. Learn how to do a 15 minute drawing. Learn how to do a three minute drawing. These are all lengths of time for a drawing that are really going to give you versatility. If you guys can only do things one way, it's really, really limiting as an artist. You want to be able to do all those different types of things. Ingress has a question about portfolios. I think you're asking about art school portfolios. Go to, I think in the video description below, we have a complete art school portfolios guide. Click on that link. It will give you guys everything you need to know. Okay, let's get into some of the other drawings. I'm still not that warmed up. So I do think I want to do at least one more five minute drawing before I get into something a little bit longer. So let's go back to my demo page. Okay. All right. And again, we're still using newsprint and we're still using these crayons. And let's see which Benedict we have up next. Ooh, I like this. <laughs> Something about the hazy blue color. He just, he's such a nice profile. <laughs> I just, oh my God, this is, this is the best way to spend my day. It's like, it's like watching TV, but not. It's like combining the best of both worlds. And I love his hair. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I promise I'm going to teach you. I promise. <laughs> we'll get back into that. Okay. All right. Calm her down. Okay. Start. Here we go. All right. And I do think it's good. You guys learn how to do a profile. Profiles are very helpful. You do have to envision the head quite differently because all of the relationships are different. So learn how to do it all. Leave no stone unturned. Okay. This is actually getting a little bit too sharp. So I'm going to try to get rid of that little point. Okay. So here I'm actually going to start with his lovely <laughs> zygomatic arch, which is right here. And then look at this jawbone. All the way down here is his jawbone. And then the ear is about here, I'm going to say. And I'm also going to look at the jacket that he's wearing. And I think, okay, so that's about the chin. And then get the, the angle of the nasal bone like this. Okay, and actually, oh, I put his cheekbone too high. Okay, let's put that a little lower. So we put the cheekbone down here and then start to put in the bulk of the nose. He's got a small mouth, especially from the profile view. It doesn't really look that large. It's sort of interesting. Okay, this is too high. Oh, whoa. Okay, so this comes down here. Okay, does everybody see how many times I had to draw this? This is not something you do quickly. It, it's something that you got to mess up a lot of times before you can really nail where you think you want things to be. Okay, again, another mistake a lot of people they don't draw the hair until they're almost done. I'm like, how can you do that? How can you leave this out? Think about how offended his hairstylist would be if you guys didn't bulk in the hair. 
Like, I would be really upset if I spent all that time on his hair and you guys just chose to not draw it. That would make me really sad. So don't do that. Make sure you put in the hair. And also, just really quick, some tone. Okay, nose is way too big. So let's fix that up. I'm gonna slow down a little bit, but I am gonna keep it still pretty loose. Here's that bit of the crease and I can see the ear is more around here if I get a little more specific. And then I guess let's accentuate that because actually you can see a little bit of the wrinkles in his neck and you got to get back in here. Actually, I need to put in the eye socket. Let's get that in. Uh, if you're going to do anything on the face, you guys, in terms of the eyes, do the eyebrow and then do like the top lid. I think the top lid to me is the most important. The bottom lid, yeah, but the top lid I, I sort of feel is the most important part. A little bit of the eyebrow on this side. Let's bring this down. Now I'm gonna bring in a little bit more line work because I'm feeling like I'm actually ready to put in some of that line work and maybe get more specific here, a little indication of the nostril, which I think I know just made me too big. Oh, well. Um, God, I think I, did I smush him this way? I think I have to do that, right? Yeah, he's got like too much hair up here. Okay, let's do some redrawing. Pull down some of the hair going this way. Ooh, I hope I do get to do a long one just so I can draw his hair. I love drawing hair. I love his hair. His hair is so incredible. I think there's not enough hair on this side. I think it, there's like a lot of hair back here. Oh my God. Okay, so then that brings that here and that brings that there. And then this comes all the way here. Does everybody see how this is basically like a bunch of dominoes? It's a domino effect. Like you fix one thing, you got to fix everything else and it, it becomes very challenging, but that's why you guys can't draw things in isolation. You can't just say, okay, now I'm just going to do the mouth. You can't do that. You got to work on everything all at once. Okay. So let's give him a little more shadow back here. And then, yeah, his, yeah, his cheekbones should come down more dramatically. And I forgot th this little pocket of your lip. This is very important. If you guys don't put that in, that mouth is not gonna stay. It's gonna be really, really hard to see. Okay, and I would spend a little more time on this eye, but I think I'm almost out of time. So let's just, at the very least, give him his little wrinkly forehead. I love it when he looks so like mad and inquisitive. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he's like looking so smart. Oh, this makes me want to go watch Sherlock like right now. I should just spend my afternoon doing that. Okay, guys, we are seven seconds in. Okay, I am totally ready to start a longer pose. So let's put this one aside. That was a good warm up. Now I'm going to be using charcoal paper. So if you guys notice the difference, that is exactly it. Okay, so let's see what the next one is. This one I'm gonna do for 10 minutes actually. Okay, so this one's not as fun. He doesn't have the hair but this is a deep dive into a profile. So I think for that reason alone, it's pretty important. So 10 minutes, we'll get started there. And I think this was from a Sherlock episode. I think it was the one, The Abominable Bride. I can't remember. It was like the last one that they ever shot, which made me incredibly sad because I don't think they're gonna make any more guys. Like I haven't heard anything about it for years. And that's just really upsetting. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm not gonna talk about that because I'm gonna be sad and I don't wanna be sad. I wanna have fun drawing. Okay, this tip getting way too sharp for me. So I'm gonna make it a little more blunt because I think that's a little bit better. Okay, now when you switch surfaces, it is a different experience because you actually have to press way harder on the charcoal paper to get the crayon to show. But in some ways, I think that works to your advantage because then you're not getting as dark so fast, especially in a longer pose. You wanna keep the drawing lighter for longer so you have more time to be flexible. Okay, let's go in here. I'm gonna actually try to draw him a little bit smaller this time. I feel like I got a little bit too big. And actually, you know what I think I need to do? Maybe I'll do it during the break, but I feel like this is getting too close to the back of the board and I can already feel that the paper is getting a little bit textury. So sometimes it's nice to have 
like a cushion of paper underneath so the paper is a little bit smoother because I can already see some of the texture that's coming in. Anyway, not an excuse. I, I'm just noting because sometimes my students are in class and they say, oh, why am I getting this weird texture? And I'm like, oh, it's because you don't have like a pad of paper underneath. And so maybe that's the reason why. Okay, so blocking in jawbone right here. There's his neck. And does everybody see the pivot of the neck? The neck is going this way. And if you guys watch my streams on the neck, you should know by now because already it was in my lecture, that the neck pivots forward. Okay, I'm gonna move this up a little bit because I think I made it a little bit too low on the page. So, okay, let's get in there. I'm actually, I'm gonna move him up. I, I don't think I like where I placed him because now I have to draw in a funny place. Okay, so let's start again. And I might actually make this one a little bit longer because I was blabbing too much. And so now I'm like three minutes in and I've barely done anything. Okay, here's his forehead. Let's get in his cheekbone which is about here. There's his ear jawbone is more like up here. And then nose. You gotta jump around guys. Don't stay in one place for too long. That's the kiss of death. You stay in one place for too long, you're ignoring everything else. Okay, lip. I think his chin is about here. Okay, and then jawbone is here. The jawbone is so, so important, you guys. You don't have a jawbone, you don't have anything. It's so, so important to have that. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring his collar all the way up here, like that. He just looks so good in historical costumes. You know, some people don't look good in historical costumes and he just looks great. Like he totally is perfect for all this. I, I sort of feel like the best actors are like that. Like they can look really contemporary, but they look great in like Shakespearean outfits. It's sort of like, I don't know, for me, the female version of that is Kate Blanchett. Like she looks super contemporary sometimes. And then other times she's like freaking Queen Elizabeth and looking amazing. Okay, I just want to block in the hair a little bit because I just feel, I don't know. I, I need to like throw it down. I just need to put it down. And that makes me feel better. Okay, here is his eyebrow. Let's get in the cheekbone again. The cheekbone is not happening. Right now, jawbone needs to be a lot more dramatic. So I'm just gonna throw in some of these shadows. So you guys can see, I mean, my approach is very tonal. Some of you guys, this might not be the best fit for you. Some people, like I said, Jordan is so good at drawing with lines. I am not, but that's why, again, you guys should study with lots of different people. Don't just study for me. I'm one person. And yes, I know we're the best, but you should study with other people. It is very helpful. Okay, so a little bit more. Okay, I'm ignoring the eye socket. So let's go back and block that in. And you know, his jawbone got, ooh, he's not wide enough. Okay, hang on a second. Let, let's move the jawbone back. Maybe the jawbone should be more like here. And then I'll move the ear back here. Does everybody see how much adjusting is going on? It, it's like, you can't just draw it once. And that happens a lot in my classes where people just draw it one time they accept it as it is and they don't make any changes. And I think that's a big mistake, guys. I think you have to make changes. Okay, let's give him a little bit more back here. And I'm just stepping back a little bit and squinting because I really feel like right now, not enough head. Like you guys would be so surprised how much is back here. There's a lot of form and a lot of people don't think about that. And that's why when I teach portrait drawing, I don't call it portrait drawing and I don't refer to it as the face. I talk about it as a head. And if you talk about it as a head, I think it puts you in the right, right frame of mind in terms of thinking about the different forms. Okay, I'm so not paying attention to the eyebrow. So let's go back in. His eyes are like really tiny and there's really bad shadow here. So this is a little bit annoying, but I'm gonna do the best I can and Ooh, that is creepy. Okay, I don't like that. That looks really bad. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I was just gonna put that aside. Oh my God. And noses are so frustrating. And I know you guys all hate drawing them because I do too. But my suggestion to you about noses, accept that they're funny looking and move on. <laughs> That's just what they are. I mean, you can be Michael Fassbender and you still have a funny looking nose. <laughs> so like, it's fine. So does Benedict, he's got a funny looking nose too. Okay, 
I am getting sidetracked and I'm not thinking about the rest of this because even things like this, like this collar down here and this collar down here and this angle of the neck and his white collar, this coming back, you might think, oh, you're wasting your time working on this stuff down here. But this to me, this is sort of like when you have a model who's sitting on a stool and you guys don't draw the stool, it looks ridiculous. So you have to place the figure somewhere. Okay, let's just make this ear look like something other than an apricot. And I really need to focus on the back of the neck. And now I'm doing a step back. Oh my God, it's so bad. <laughs> like the shapes are not even, okay, 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 it's fine, it's fine, you, you'll survive. Okay, this eye is way smaller. His eyebrow, again, like this is not the best photo, I think in terms of lighting. The lighting is really not that great. It's a little bit, I don't know. I think his forehead's too small. I think something's funky. Anyway, let's just deal. Because I, I don't think it's that important that you guys see me do an amazing drawing of him. I just want you guys to see how I process things. Like how do I actually move from one thing to the next and then everything else is up to you. It really is. And if it looks like Benedict, fine. If it doesn't, you know, I'll cry, but that's fine. I'm gonna actually pull the nose a little bit further out. So let's put it out here like that. That might be the biggest mistake, but you know what? I, I just think I did something funky with the lips because there's definitely this like crease here that I did not take advantage of. And also like this little bitty pocket of the lip, which I don't think is coming across. And then there's these forms around the mouth as well. Oh, his chin is way too big. Okay, that's it. I bet you anything you guys, you can see my proportional problems better than I can because you're not looking at my drawing and you guys are further away. You're not me. That makes a really big difference. All of those things. I say to my students, look guys, the reason I know how to help you is because I'm not you because I can step back and I can look at your work objectively and you can't because it's your work. Okay, let's go back in and now I'm going to slow down a little bit and try to work some of these areas not very happy about this chin still. I feel like it should come back a little more. I'm still, oh, this nose is driving me crazy. That's okay. I think also I, I didn't do a great job of showing like this section of the nose and his nose is like, it's really angled and strange looking. So I'm just gonna blame it on you, Benedict. <laughs> it's, it's your fault for your anatomy being so strange. Okay, I gotta pick it up. I only have a minute left on this one. Let's just do something on the eyes so it's not so totally embarrassing. And I think I've got to push the ear back. Maybe the ear's too big. See, th this is where portraiture is not like figure drawing. Figure drawing, I think, yeah, you're going to pick at stuff, but not the way you pick at a portrait. In a portrait, it's like a little here, a little there. It can drive you absolutely crazy sometimes. And I do want to show like the direction of the marks maybe block in more of his zygomatic arch over here, get more of the angle of this. Now, see, I only have 30, 13 seconds left, so I'm just trying to like group things a little bit better, just so it's not nothing. And I have something on the page. There we go. Okay, let me take a quick break. And then I think after this, I'm gonna do one that's pretty long. So let me hit back to my other reference. And let's see what you guys are talking about. Ask me your questions, let me know now because I'm gonna do a longer drawing after this. Okay, let's see what you guys are saying. Wow, there's a lot of you guys hanging out today. We got over 120 people, very, very cool. Okay, Annie is saying, I can't handle the feeling of charcoal paper. It's so fun to work with, but it gives me goosebumps the whole time. <laughs> I know I have some people who really can't stand vine charcoal because sometimes it makes that squeaky sound and it drives everybody up the wall. There's always some student in my class who manages to make that squeaky sound at some point and we all go, oh, it's like your fingernails on the scratch board type of thing, blackboard type of thing. Okay, let's see what else people are talking about. Jenko 17, working on your portfolio for graphic design, never done anatomy. I feel like it's holding my art back. Should I make artworks with mediocre anatomy or no anatomy? 
Well, Janko, anatomy is really not 100% necessary for an art school portfolio. You can totally do an art school portfolio that has no anatomy at all, and it's fine. My feeling is that you should not be learning anatomy out of obligation because number one, it's not going to be fun. <laughs> number two, I just think that you shouldn't be forcing yourself to do so. Oh, I should do that. You, you should find a point where you, re oh, wow, if I learn anatomy, that will make this a lot better. That is when you learn anatomy. If you don't really have a strong understanding of why you think anatomy is important, then don't learn it. You have to figure out first why you need to learn it. So actually, those of you guys in the chat, maybe you can give some suggestions to Janko why anatomy might be helpful. Because it's sort of like saying to somebody, hey, you should, as a scientist, memorize the periodic table. But just because you know the periodic table doesn't mean you know how to be a good scientist or that you would understand how to contextualize the periodic table. Now, I don't know anything about that because I'm not a scientist, but I think it's a similar thing that anatomy, it's a really particular subset of knowledge that helps in a lot of areas, but you have to see why it helps in those areas. And by the way, you guys, if you want some examples of somebody who does really good head drawings, look at Kathy Kollowitz because feeling a little inferior right now, that's okay, Kathy Kollowitz, you, you did work in a very oppressive time period compared to me. And so fine, that's fine if you're better. It's okay, I'm dealing. But look at her work and look at how there are almost no details in Kathy Kollowitz's drawings. I mean, could you tell who I was looking at? <laughs> yes, I definitely have looked at her work just a few times in my career. But she's a great person because she's very sculptural the way she draws and she's very efficient. And then guys, little things like this, like this is just a quick drawing that I did of my daughter on her iPad. I mean, this is like a five minute drawing. This is another one that I did of her. I mean, these do not have to be of famous people or I mean, it can be just people around the house, your family. I mean, you're probably not seeing a lot of your friends right now. But there's no reason that you have to draw from photos. Do both, okay? Do it all. That's the most important thing. Okay, wow, we got a lot of new people in here. A lot of new names that I've never seen before, which is really cool. Okay, let's see what else people are saying. Nougat, Nougat says, darn, his gorgeous exotic facial anatomy. I can definitely get on board with that concept. <laughs> But you know, it's so much of it, it's it's not just, okay, just just a little break from the anatomy for me. It's, it's not just the face, it's the voice. Oh my God, that, that face, that voice, and then the rhythm, and then the jacket, it's like, and then you add the hair, and it's just like, oh my God, this is like too much. Like my face is going to explode, just like thinking about this. Okay, thank you for the super chat, Tamara. Really appreciate you guys and your help i'll i'll tell you i'm gonna do probably a video at some point to explain to everybody just what happened after my utah announcement but i just i was not expecting people to relate to it so much i just sort of thought okay i'm just gonna tell people what i did and i guess when you live with something like that for so long you just start to accept oh yeah that's just what it is that's just my life and then you start to accept it as being very normal. And I guess a lot of people just really had no idea what my life in academia was like. And so a lot of people actually said to me, my God, I was so shocked. I thought you were full time. I thought you were tenured this whole time. And so I didn't realize what a big surprise it was going to be for people when I made that announcement. So anyway, I am going to reply to your uh, messages, guys. It's just taking me a while because there's so many people. Michael is saying... Do you think starting in with shape and line work is more effective than blocking in values or is it just preference? I think it's just preference, Michael. Everybody's so different. I think it's like, do you like eating apples or do you like eating pears? It's like they're different. They're not the same thing and they won't give you the same result. But who cares if it's an apple or pear? It's like, whatever, it's fine. What I do think you guys should do is do both because I do get a lot of questions like that where people say, oh, well, is it better to do this or is it better to do that? And a lot of the times you guys are going to hear me say to people, do both. 
figure out why you like line better than tone. Or maybe by trying more line, you realize, hey, I like this better than tone. So the key, I think, you guys, in terms of your studio practice as an artist, you can't leave any stone unturned. You can't say, oh, well, this is the way this works really well for me. So I'm not going to bother learning anything else. That diversity is really important. And that's one of the reasons why at Art Prof, I am not the only teacher. We have all these people on Art Prof who I work with. And Lauren Welch is so hilarious because we get along so well, but we never agree on anything. Like, Have you guys noticed we're always arguing <laughs> during discussions? It's really, really funny. I thought meme is saying, do you consider tracing as art? I don't know that I would say that's an art form as much as that is a technique. And there are certain contexts where I think it makes sense to do that. For example, if you guys are making a really big mural and the mural is 10 feet wide, you probably should use a projector. A lot of people do that because it's so time consuming to hand draw it. And if you have the facility, then go ahead. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, I feel like hiring other people to paint your paintings is worse than tracing your own stuff. But that's a conversation for another day. Let's see. Adira is saying, how do you not stress out doing a live drawing? I do. I totally do. <laughs> If it's for every single live stream, I'm like, why am I doing this to myself? <laughs> like, oh my God, I totally stress about it. Absolutely. I just don't want to act like a total crazy person when I'm online. So yes, I do. It, it does not get that much easier. I mean, I suspect that it's probably like being an actor, like Benedict. I'm sure he must get nervous. Come on. There's no chance that he's that inhuman. I mean, yes, he's perfect. But I'm just saying that I think there are a lot of parts of your practice as an artist that never go away. The self-doubt, the questioning, the experimentation, all of those things are going to be with you your whole life. You're not going to at some point say, I don't need to experiment anymore. I don't need to learn anymore. You do. You really, really do. I've been doing this for so long and I'm always learning stuff. And it's one of my favorite things about being an artist. Let's see. Carol says, I feel like my first drawing looks like Thomas Jefferson and the second looks like Ray Fiennes. Oh, I, I would take that. I don't care about Thomas Jefferson, but I like Ray Fiennes. <laughs> hey, we should do a Ray Fiennes dream. Oh, he's great. I love him. <laughs> he was so annoying in The English Patient, which, by the way, I did not like that movie. But oh, my God, he's got a great voice. Ray Fiennes. Oh, my God. <laughs> OK, OK, we're going to get back to it. I promise I'm going to teach you today. Let's see. Anjusha says, I never drawn a portrait properly. This is my first time and it's getting better. Well, that's fantastic. You know, you guys, you can't practice and not get better. It's not going to happen overnight. And you may not see it visibly until a few weeks have passed, but that's fine. It really is okay for you guys to do that. Okay. Uh, Jason Wertnick says, as a chemist, I approve that analogy. <laughs> That's great because I'm always trying to come up with these analogies and oftentimes I put them in terms of science and I'm like, would a chemist be just squirming in their grave right now? Like just thinking about all this. Like I tried to make some reference to hieroglyphs yesterday and it just was a mistake. I was like, oh crap. Like the second it came out of my mouth, I was like, that was dumb. Why did you say that? So yes, definitely for sure. Annie says, do you worry about likeness in your drawings? Really good question, because you know what? Top portrait mistake number one, stressing about likeness and accuracy. Because here's the thing. If I was a sculptor for Madame Tussauds and I had to make a realistic image of Benedict that looked exactly like him, yes, I would stress about accuracy and likeness. But most of the time when I'm drawing something, accuracy is not that important. And likeness isn't that important. Like, I did so many drawings, you guys, of Benedict. They don't even look like him. Like, who cares? I don't care. It does not matter to me. I mean, granted, I'm doing them for educational reasons. Maybe I'd feel differently if I was actually trying to, like, make art about it. But most of the time, I really, really do not care, guys. I don't know. It's just maybe you just get to a certain point. Those of you who are age 40 and older, tell me if this is accurate. You just get a certain point in your life. where You're just like, I don't care. Like when I was younger, when I was in my 20s, 
I used to tell people I didn't care, but I totally did. And now I'm like, who cares? It doesn't matter. <laughs> so anyway, let's see. Jade Leaf says, I'm not really a fan of Benedict, but he is an interesting and unusual face, so that's fun to draw. Okay, well, Jade Leaf, you just got excommunicated from my life, but that's okay. That's okay if you don't appreciate him for the perfection that he is. That's okay. Comcuke says, I watched the Taiwan video. Are the Tombow markers very different from generics and knockoffs? You know something, Comcuke? I'm very spoiled because Tombow gives us supplies because they sponsor us. So I have not really tried a lot of the other ones. What I would just do, maybe just buy like one of the generics and see if it's a big difference or not. I will tell you that I tried the Stadler ones at one point, the Stadler brush pens, and I did not like them. They were weird and rubbery. The, the tip was a little bit stiffer than the Tombow ones, and I felt like the ink didn't flow quite as well. So I like the Tombow ones, but definitely try out the other ones. I mean, it would not be that bad. Raymond is asking about a vlog of my move. Probably not the messy stuff, like moving all the boxes, <laughs> but we are going to drive cross country. So I did think, okay, you're kind of crazy, Clara, but maybe you should shoot a tutorial of traveling from Massachusetts to Utah. That might be really fun. But I got to see how viable that is because, oh my God, there's just so much stuff going on. <laughs> Let's see. Same RMC says the fangirling is really strong here. Well, you know, I haven't done a hot white man stream for a while. And so I just was like, Clara, you got to give this to yourself. You worked really hard on that graduation stream. So you totally deserve this. <laughs> okay, guys, let's get started. I'm going to do a longer one now. So that way we can get into some of more of the specifics. So let me get set up. And let's see what image is up next for you guys. Okay, so we did this one. See, I don't like this one because he doesn't have the Sherlock hair. The Sherlock hair to me makes a really big difference. You know, I don't like this one either because he looks a little surprised. So hang on a second. Okay, this one has really good lighting, but I don't know. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> we have to do this one. I don't know why. I just love it when he looks like like he's really thinking hard. He just looks so good. Okay, let's do this one. This is that one where Watson got married. Did anybody see that? Oh my God, that was such a good episode. Okay, let's do this one. So here he is looking very inquisitive. I don't know. He's not really upset. He doesn't get mad, but he does roll his eyes a lot. And so I can definitely relate to that. Okay, let's get into our next page. Okay, guys, actually, you know what I got to do? I have to get some paper to put underneath this because it's too thin and I'm going to get too much of a texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to here. And if you guys just pause with me for a minute, I'm going to grab some paper. Okay, this should make a difference. These are the minor little things that I do believe make a difference when you draw. So, okay, let's grab this, get rid of that. And I'm gonna rip off that drawing. Here, let me go back to demo mode. Here we go. Get this one off. And let's put this down here. And then I'm gonna also put a stack of newsprint here. So that way we can see things a little bit better. Okay, here we go. See, now I have like a nice cushioned surface of paper and it's just gonna be a lot better, a lot smoother for me to draw on. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's pull up the portrait and I hope you guys are drawing along with me because I just love it when you guys do that and use hashtag artprofshare you can share in the Discord and you can also share on Instagram. So let me know what you guys are doing. Okay, this one's gonna be a lot longer. So let's do a 20 minute. And then what I might do is do a second round of 20 minutes again, so I can really push it a lot further. Because I love doing the quick stuff, but I feel like the quick stuff doesn't mean a lot if you can't see the follow through on how that works. Okay, here we go. Now we're gonna do it. See, okay guys, 
Don't do what I just did. Oh, you have more time. Now you can slow down. Don't do that. Okay. Pretend you still have five minutes. Treat this like a gesture. Okay. Don't fall into that trap that I just fell into. Okay. Here we go. Okay, Benedict. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Let's see. There's a slight tilt to this portrait. And so even now, let's see, jawbone here, neck tilted, and here more so than even the other ones, I think the collar is really important because if you don't put in the collar, you don't get the tilt of his head. So don't leave that out, guys. That's pretty important. Okay, and I'm I'm gonna do his hair this time, guys. I'm excited. Yes. See, I wish he always looked like that. See, I like I like you, Benedict, but you're just much better when you're Sherlock. I don't know. His normal hair is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I just really like his Sherlock hair. Okay. So you guys see, like, even now, I'm putting time in the hair. And so many people, they, they don't add the hair to the last minute. I'm like, how can you do that? It always ends up looking like a wig. It looks really, really bad. So don't do that. Okay. So now cheekbones. Remember? Zygomatic arch right up here. Really important. Here's about his zygomatic arch, maybe on this side. And let's get in his jaw. It's more like this. I think it's a little rounder than I made it. And then let's just approximate the nasal bone and maybe some of these creases. Like this crease by the nose, you can see it really well. Like, does everybody see, this is a really good reference. I think it's a good photo, but it's a great reference photo because it has very visible highlights, really visible shadows. And if you guys watched my Michael Fassbender tutorial, you will know that there's reflected light on the right-hand side. See how awesome that is? Like, it's really, really visible. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I really recommend you guys go and you watch my, um, Let's see, this tutorial, which is the light and shadows portrait drawing tutorial. Really, really helpful. Okay, let's get rid of that. Let's put the timer back. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's get the eye sockets, which are about here. And I'd say this eye socket is a little harder to see. Let's get the nose a little longer. And fulcrum, which is this little thing, it's in between your nose and your mouth. And then for the mouth, I'm just going to do the, the outline that's in between the two lips. Okay. And notice how there are these pockets. There's his chin and I made it way too small. I think his chin is like all the way down here. I think I made him too tilted, but who cares? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Actually, my daughter, she's 11. She made through this. She's going through this phase where she had all these phrases that she would use all the time. And one of them was, who cares? Deal with it. I was like, yep, I should. That's just what you should say. Who cares? Deal with it, right? Sometimes you can't fix things. Okay. Now here, I need to do a little bit more, but I do want to get in the lighting sooner rather than later, because I can already feel myself stiffening up a little bit, which I don't like. And so here, let's just get in a little bit more cheekbone. And yes, I know you guys can barely see what I'm drawing, but that's on purpose. It's because if I draw too dark, I'm going to get screwed later on. So too bad. Deal with it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, collar needs to be redefined. See, I'm going to bring this down and put his neck more there. Let's put the collar all the way down here. Oh, whoever did the suits for this show did a really good job. He looks really good in this suit. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, here we go. The tie as well is also like a scale comparison. So again, you might think, oh, that tie doesn't matter, but it actually really does. And things like this shadow that's underneath the collar and this shadow underneath the collar, that all matters too. And even this color change, just to quickly say, okay, this is dark. All right, that's how you really establish things in the beginning. Okay, so let's get in here. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of shadow, that rug of tone that you guys have heard me talk about, and then I'm gonna jump more into the line work. So here, let's just get in big shapes of tone. This is just to hold the place. I, I'm not actually gonna do much 
right now. And actually there's a lot of highlights over here. So I'm not going to do too much in that area because it'll get too dark too fast. But what I do want to do is do this. Watch this rug of tone right now. See this? I'm just going to fill this whole area. And now the reason I want to do that is because there is nothing on this side of the portrait that is remotely as bright as this. So if that's true, you might as well just fill the whole thing in. It's a lot easier that way. Okay, here we go. Now let's get in some more specifics. So now I'm gonna get a little bit lighter, but I do wanna start to put in things like, for example, his weird nostrils and maybe the side of the nose. And then always this, this crease in the face. This is really, really helpful, guys. Let's get in the fulcrum, which is here. And let's see that this little pocket is pretty pronounced. And if I look at the line of his mouth, it's not as symmetrical as you think. You think it's symmetrical, but it's a little bit, this side's a little shorter. So I'm going to put this like this. And then this side gets a little longer. And then here is a very dramatic pocket for his lip. Actually, I think this should be more like that. I mean, I'd have to go back in and fix that some more, but let's just move on for now. Here's some of the chin. The chin is very dramatic down here at the bottom. And let's really solidify that some more. Okay, it's still, you know, I lost the ear. We gotta put the ear back. But before we do that, let's give a little more zygomatic arch right here. And let's, let's just, place the ear like I think the ear is about here is the bottom I just looked at it in relation to the nose and the nose is like dripping I don't really like that so much okay hang on let's move this up a little higher because I think that was not a good move and then I really have to get in here and do his eyebrows like this I don't know he looks so good when he's looking all like analytical it's great He's such a good, like, mad face. Actually, Michael Fassbender has a good one, too, <laughs> when he's looking really mad. I love it. It's so good. Okay, let's get in more of the eye socket. This eye is going to be tricky because this eye, let's just do the top of the lid, a little bit of the pupil. I don't want to do too much because this is a pretty delicate area. Like, there isn't a lot going on. And so I want to make sure I really feel confident about that area. And let's see, this should be a little bit straighter. Like this contour is so specific. Okay, and then these like creases up here, I think are pretty important, especially to the, the gesture of the figure and also the emotion of the figure. Okay, let's get, see, I wanna show the division up here because there's this hair that comes out like this, this direction. And then there's hair that comes down. So with hair, you're looking at the direction of it. You're not looking so much at the exact shape. You're just trying to figure out where it's going. Now, see, most of it's covered, the ear. You can only see a little portion of it, but I am going to show a little bit of the shadow so it gets a little more specific there, the bottom. And then let's redefine his neck so it's a little bit more solid. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. Okay, I, I am having a moment of confidence. <laughs> Just want you guys to know because so much of the time I feel like I'm crapping on myself and I, I can't help it. That's what we all do. But I just trying to recognize that feeling pretty good now. It's good. <laughs> Let's see how long it lasts. How long it's gonna last that long, but that's okay. Well, so one of the reasons why I am feeling better about it is because I think that I stayed light long enough to make a lot of changes that I think really were necessary. And so that really helped me a lot. It's feeling like, okay, yeah, you did stay light long enough. Cause sometimes I get dark really fast and then I pay for it later. So that is definitely something that I think about. Okay, there's this big like chunk of hair that's sort of pushing down. And then there's like another chunk that goes this way. When you guys draw hair, you gotta group it. So it's like a chunk here, a chunk there. And there's another one up here. I'll, I'll come back to it, obviously, but I'm just trying to block in some general areas. And I do think maybe a little more up here. I don't know, maybe this, 
form back here. We'll, we'll come back to it. I mean, this photo is sort of bugging me because the hair, it's really, really flat. Like you, you almost can't see anything. Like this whole section in the photo is like flat black. I can't see anything. And if this were me looking at him in real life, I would see a lot more detail than that. Okay, let's work on the face because I did not really do very much. And here, let's try to get the top of his eyelid. This is a weird pose because this eye is like closed, but then the other one is like very visibly open, but not that open. I think I made it too open. I might have to really slow down to do this because this is super detailed. Hopefully you guys can see, and this is very dark. And then let's just get in the upper lid. I feel like if I get the upper lid, then maybe that's enough to keep me going. I gotta stop for a second, pull out some key things. Okay, so hang on. I do want to work in the eye, but I think it might be premature. I, I need more of the eye socket. Like see this shape I just put in there? That is being put in there so that the eye socket feels more dramatic. And now this I'm really going to beef up, which is this like crease in his face. And then the lip, we really got to spend some time on the lip. Got to make this pocket around the mouth more dramatic. I'm going to look at how the whole top of his upper lip, which is pretty dark on this side, like that. This is tricky that the lip is really hard. And I think a lot of people, it ends up looking very mechanical. So what I really try to emphasize is these pockets. These pockets make a huge difference. And then see how this crease comes down and then something harsher. So here at the bottom, does everybody see how some of the edges of the shadows are really harsh and really well defined and then others are not. So down here, we have a very soft shadow that comes around his mouth and this comes around as well. So if you guys look at the way I'm constructing his mouth, I'm not really spending that much time on the lips. I'm actually spending more time around the lips because the stuff around the lips matters more. Okay. And so now let's get more specific with the nose. I might actually in my photo right now, I'm just going to enlarge it because I'm having trouble seeing it pretty well. Whoops. Hang on a sec. Let's make that really big. Okay. That way I can see the forms a little bit better. And by the way, you guys, if you do draw somebody from life, really, if you can sit as close as you can, because the more information, the better. You, you cannot go wrong when you have more information. Okay. So now let's just really drive this chin home. This is a cast shadow here. And now this is a form shadow. And let's go back in and just a little bit of information here, a little bit here. I do want to come back and do more on his collar. And this should be a little more straight because this suit sort of comes around. So I will come back to this. I'm just feeling really uneasy about the face right now. It still feels very unstable to me. So I, I wanna get back to that. Even though I know I should be making this darker and more dramatic. Okay, I got six more minutes and then I'll take some time for questions. So let's get in the shadow on the nose like this, more shadow up here. And this whole area too, this is reflected light, but look at the jawbone, it's pretty pronounced. So I wanna make that more dramatic down there. Okay, so if you guys look at this, yeah, I've worked on the mouth a little bit, but actually most of this has been stuff around the facial features. So don't tell yourself that a portrait is eyes, nose, and mouth. Eyes, nose, and mouth, it's like decoration. <laughs> they're really not that important, actually. If you really think about the structure, they're not. They just really are not. Okay. I still feel like I'm not being very expressive just yet, but that's because I just think there's more to do right now. There's more structural stuff that I have to take care of, but I do want to pump up my marks because they are feeling a little bit wimpy right now to me. But I think it's because I'm trying to get a handle on the lighting that I think that's why I'm being a little bit wimpy about it. Okay. Cause some of this stuff, you, you can't really rush some of the more, um, delicate, delicate parts of that. Image, right. I, everything is delicate when it comes to it. <laughs> okay. Here we go. I think this goes
goes to show you guys, I should not go longer than a week without doing one of these. <laughs> That's what I think. I think that they should be at least a weekly occurrence because look at what happened to me. Like I didn't do one of these in so long and now I'm like totally out of control. Okay, here we go. Um, hmm. I lost this, this, this is important. This crease because it, it shows the form better. And actually a little here, you can see his cheekbone a little bit more. And I something's funky here. Like the lighting on his eyebrows is strange. Like I can't really, I can't figure out if that's like shadow from his hair or if that's just his eyebrows are weird looking or both. It's, it's really hard to see. That, that's why photographs, I, they just drive me crazy because I can't tell. Usually in real life, you can sort of figure it out. If, if you look closely, you can see, oh yeah, yeah, that is a shadow. But in a photo, it can trick you quite a bit. Okay, let's get, okay, I've been really avoiding this eye. So we have to get these eyes to line up a little bit better because I have not done a good job of that. So I'm gonna really slow down a lot and try to get this eye in here. I find blue eyes really hard to draw. I think they're tricky. I think when people have darker eyes, like they're, they're a little bit more dramatic, they're easier to see, but with lighter eyes, it's not so easy. Okay. Still wanna stay pretty general though. I don't wanna get too seduced by all these details, but I am definitely feeling the call of that. Okay, let's try to get... So here's the reason I think why I like tone is because now it's easy for me to like pull the line out of the tone, like the tone sort of has my back a little bit. Well, with the line, I just sort of feel like I don't have a lot of backup. And so it's harder for me to do as an artist. I mean, I don't know, talk to Jordan. He's better at this than I am in terms of line. Okay, let's get in a little bit more. See, this eye is barely there. Like a lot of people try to put so much emphasis on pupils. And it's like half the time the pupils aren't even visible. Like his pupil is barely there because there's just so much shadow in this area. I mean, I'm going to have to go back and really take a second look, but that's what I'm definitely noticing right now. Okay, now what I'm noticing, and guys, tell me if you're doing this too, I'm starting to slow down so much that I feel like I'm losing the bite and the spontaneity of my drawing. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to try to pump it up a little in terms of my marks and try to be a little more aggressive because I, I'm losing that bite that I like to have in my drawings, even if it's a long drawing. I, I really wanna get that to become more dramatic. Okay, and here too, there's a little more emphasis on his bony structure. Okay, now I'm spending too much time here. Okay, we gotta work on the hair. Let's do the hair. And you know something, I need another crown for this because that crown's starting to die on me. And let's just get in some tone. I mean, this is going to take a while for me to build up, but that's all right. That's fine. It's just, it's more work with charcoal paper. If you have newsprint, you're going to be better off. Or if you guys are working in a sketchbook, you're going to be better off. But with charcoal paper, you, you got to work. You got to work real hard to get in some of that. Okay. And I'm going to take a break pretty soon. So you guys can uh, ask me questions and make comments. Talk to me about Benedict, which I'm always willing to do any time of day. <laughs> okay. Yeah, see, this this is a lot of work here. Like, this is just layering. This is, you guys, really just... You got to put in, like, the physical manual labor to get this going. Like, here... Oh, man. I got to just really whip it out, I think. It's just... So for me, part of this is just really getting back into the aggression that you have in the beginning that you lose when you work on a drawing longer than five minutes or so. And I really want to play with my marks, so I'm going to let it rip in a little bit. But we only have 20 seconds left, so let's take a quick break, guys, and I'll come back to this after looking at your questions. Okay. Put this aside and let's see what you guys are saying. Okay. Let's minimize you, Benedict, and see what people are saying. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go with the most recent comments and I'm going to scroll back up. So if you asked a comment a little ways back, hopefully I'll get to it. Let's see, Clara is saying, what pencil did you use? So right now I am using not newsprint, but charcoal paper with Karen Dash Neo Color One crayons. If you guys want links to the supplies, they're all in the video description below. So that way you can see exactly what those items are. And also, if you're drawing along with me, tag us on Instagram with at art.prof and use hashtag artprofshare so we can see your stuff and we can share it with people. You can also post it in Discord under post live streams so we can see what you guys are up to. Although now that I'm thinking about it, maybe we should make an art prof share channel. Maybe that would consolidate things a little bit more. But anyway, we'll figure that out later. And Jade Leaf says my graphite stick flew out of my hand in the frenzy of drawing. And my Benedict looks like he's had a very rough night. <laughs> oh my God, you guys are awesome. I just love that so much. Let's see, Tuo Justara says, I only started watching a few days ago. They're helping me a lot, especially the ones about oil painting. Thank you so much for making them. Well, I'm so glad you guys found us. I'll tell you, I'm getting so many comments from people saying, I don't understand why your channel has so few subscribers. Why aren't you guys bigger? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, please help us. I don't know why we're not bigger. Anyway, um, let's see, what else do we have going? Annie is saying, do you recommend the 100 heads challenge? Other similar challenges I might try it out as an entrance to portraiture. Can't decide how productive it is. Well, Annie, I would head over to Discord. There's actually a channel called 2500 Challenge. And I think once you get in there, Jordan McCracken Foster, one of our teaching artists, he can be very persuasive. And I think you'll see there's a lot of people in there doing it. And you guys are going to ride the momentum with each other. I think when you have a group of people and they're doing it with you and you have that little voice that says, uh, I don't know, everybody else is going to peer pressure you into doing it. So I think it's a win-win situation in my opinion. Let's see, somebody saying, sorry, your name is in Japanese. I can't say it. I have trouble drawing lips. Any tips? Okay. Well, if we go back and we look at this, okay. See Benedict, this is from the imitation game. I don't know if anybody saw this. He was fine. I just watched it because he was in it. It wasn't great though. It was okay. Anyway, start with the line in between the lips. Because you know what I see a lot? People try to trace the lip, like they'll trace the bottom and they'll trace the top. And that's not helpful, guys, because that's not what defines the form. This is what defines the form. The lip of the lines and then these pockets that are on the side of the lips. People never draw these. They're really, really important. And ultimately, when you guys are drawing lips, it's the stuff around the lips. Like a lot of people, they just draw lips, only draw the lips. They don't draw the pockets. They don't draw the chin. They don't draw the fulcrum or the shadows around it. That is the most important thing. It's the forms around the lips, the forms around the eyes. That's what you guys really, really have to think about. Thank you so much for the super chat, Rachel B. I really appreciate your support, you guys. Yeah, and remember, you can donate anytime you guys want. We do have, of course, our wonderful top Patreon supporters who support us every single month, but we also have links for one-time donations. So if you don't want to do a monthly commitment, you can do that as well. So anyway, we appreciate it because we sustain ourselves entirely on donations. And let's just say we're hanging off by a bare thread. And with me moving to Utah, it's even bigger of a risk. So I'm hoping we can do it. I mean, I didn't realize a lot of people thought Art Prof was this little side gig. I'm like, no, this is my life. And basically we've been bleeding cash for a while and we, we need something more reliable than just what we have right now. So we're, we're going to need to work on that. Okay. Let's see what other people are saying in the chat. And Haley says, I'm really into charcoal for portraits. Yeah, we did a shout out for Haley a little ways back. Haley's been doing these wonderful charcoal drawings based on one of our tutorials. So definitely take a look at that. And let's see, Jay Cabby says, yes, keep doing these once a week. I love them. Well, you know, any chance I have to <laughs> talk about the hot white men in my life. 
<laughs> Although I'm not going to talk about my husband. That's just, that's private. So anyway, he's never going to appear on one of these streams. Okay. Um, Become the Color says, watch your videos on Taiwan and China. Inspired me to get some Tombow brush pens. What paper do you guys use in those videos? Okay. I would say for brush pens, if you're not going to put any water on it and it's just straight brush pen, Bristol board is great. Bristol board is really nice because it's smooth. And so the brush pens glide across it really, really well. Now, if you want to add water to them, which I oftentimes do, like I'll take a water brush and I'll just add it to the brush pen, it ends up looking a lot like watercolor. I would use watercolor paper then because watercolor paper, it's a lot more durable. The Bristol board, you can make it wet, but it doesn't do great with that. Or the other thing I recommend if you're traveling, get a watercolor block. A watercolor block is a pad of newsprint, except it's sealed with glue on all four sides. So when it buckles as you're painting, it gets all buckly, but then when it dries in the watercolor block, it stays flat. It's fabulous. They do cost more than a pad, but in my opinion, it's worth it if you can really do that. Okay, let's see what else people are saying. Thank you so much for the super chat. Nikki A, really appreciate your support. Really excited about that. And let's see. Every movie with Benedict is great. Thank you, Carla. I know. Although there's a couple I haven't seen. Like, I never saw him in that Star Trek movie because I was like, ew. I don't know if I like you with blonde hair. This is sort of weird. Like, it's just wrong. I don't know. Like, Michael Fassbender, he looked terrible with blonde hair. He was blonde in those alien movies. I, I just couldn't. I was like, ugh, this is not fun for me. <laughs> Lydia is saying, do you have any tips on how to make skin look more realistic and pencil drawing? It's difficult to get the right texture. Well, I think Lydia, the key to skin, no matter what you're doing, you have to begin to recognize what is a bony area and what's a fleshy area. Because especially on a face, think about how different the skin is on each part of your face. Like think about the skin on your lips compared to the skin on your cheekbones. It's very, very different. Or the skin on your forehead, how that is different from the skin on your chin. And so it's not so much that there's a certain texture you have to get, as much as it is that you need to make the skin feel different. Because I think when skin doesn't look good in a portrait, most of the time is because people are drawing the skin the same. And so that's when you end up with a portrait drawing where people almost look like dolls in a way. Their faces look too plastic and too perfect. And so that's why I think if you look at a real person as opposed to say a figure in a video game, the figure in the video game, it just looks fake because things are too much the same. And on an average person, there's so many different textures. And so that's what you have to show is that range of textures. Nikki A is saying, you're selling the drawings you do. Looks like I'm saving up. Yep, so this is new. If you guys go to my Etsy shop, you can find the link in the video description below. There is a category in my shop called Art Prof Drawings because a bunch of people asked me about this. But anyway, what I've been doing is after every single live drawing stream is I will post a listing for the drawings that I do. And this all goes back to Art Prof. Although, I don't know, maybe I'll buy some ice cream. But <laughs> anyway, ice cream or Art Prof, whichever one you want to support. You can go there and you can find all of the drawings that I've done and help support us. Everything helps us, you guys, every single thing, literally, because we're on a shoestring budget. We're barely hanging in there. And so, yeah, take a look at the Etsy shop. I think that's pretty fun. Okay, thank you for the super chat, Elroy Murray. Really appreciate that. And yeah, Jade Leaf, I know I heard about Benedict in the Frankenstein production and I know he was writhing in his underpants. I know. I think that they took it down, though. Somebody told me it's not available anymore. So that makes me really sad. Like, how did I miss that? I guess I must be like following the wrong Instagrams. Although, you know, what I decided, guys, I, I actually followed this Michael Fassbender Instagram for a little while. And the people that run it are hardcore. They're like really good. And so I followed it for a little while. And I couldn't do it because I go through my Instagram trying to do work stuff and I would get like all distracted. I'm like, I can't do this. I can't follow you guys. You're too distracting. So I actually unfollowed them because I was like, I have to get work done. There's, it's not going to happen if I don't do that. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. 
Do you guys also see nothing? Is my internet cut off? I think that's you, Alice DB. According to my thing, it's still streaming, so hopefully you can get that fixed at some point. Okay. Yeah, they only keep up Benedict for a week after they stream. Crap. Well, you guys have to keep me in the loop because I'm pretty upset that I missed that moment. It sounds really incredible. Okay, what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to do another 20 minutes and let's see how far we can get this. I don't know how far I'm going to go. Let's just play it by ear and then we'll go from there. So I'll do another thing um, where you guys can talk to me about the development of the drawing because I do think it is interesting to see how things change. Okay, so let me get back into my drawing position. Okay. And I hope you guys are drawing along with me. I love opening up Instagram and seeing what you guys are doing afterwards. Okay, so let's get all my stuff in place. We're going to go back to the demo view and we're gonna start the timer. Let's just do 20 minutes. Okay, let's see. Why is that thing not operating? There we go. Okay, let's get out my crayon. We'll get going. All right, Benedict, I need you a little bit bigger so I can see your lovely features. <laughs> I feel like he's too soft in my drawing. If I were to self-critique now for a minute, I think he's too mushy and I need to make him a little bit bonier. So let's see if we can really infuse some harsher, more dramatic marks. And you know what the first thought in my mind is, but what if you screw it up? So what? You can do that, it's okay. This is all about the process, you guys. You can't get hung up on the product. And I know that's what we're all here for. We're all here to do a good drawing. Nobody wants to do a bad drawing. But if you wanna make good drawings, you guys have to make bad ones too. That is a requirement. It's a quota. Give yourself a quota of bad drawings. I have to do 10 a month. I bet you anything will fulfill that pretty quickly, but it will make you feel better, okay? All right, let's see what's going on. I think, hmm, I gotta do hair, I, I really do. At the very least, just to give some of this a little bit more structure, because I'm, I'm losing some of these forms. This is the crappy crayon, let me get the other one. This one's a little bit more substantial. And I want to be more focused because I, I do feel in the beginning of a drawing that I really am just all over the place. But right now it is time to start making some decisions, making some commitments like this. And let's see, we, we have to really, hmm, let me take a minute and think about this. Okay, we, we need to block in big shapes. That's what we need. Because I did not do that, and now I'm paying the consequences. So let's get in some big shapes, especially down here. Let me move the hair down so you guys can see this a little bit better. But up here, let's just go to town on some of these strokes. Because this is really like thick, beautiful, luscious hair. <laughs> we don't want to make it look like anything other than that, right? Okay. This is where you guys are going to get in your workout in terms of drawing to really nail it in there. This is charcoal paper, so I, I really have to press like crazy to make this work. Okay, and some of these strokes, they're a little bit more visible than I'd like them to be, but the thing is I'd rather have that than have the hair just be boring and, and not really do much. So I'm going to let some hairs pull out a little bit more. Start to pull some of that. It's the direction. That's what you guys are thinking about. It's the direction of the hair. That's what matters when it comes down to it. Ooh, I like this hair. That's a nice one, Benedict. Good. <laughs> Actually, it's probably, it's not him. It's probably his hairstylist. His hairstylist is great. <laughs> The person on Sherlock. Okay, now here, let's slow down. There's this like really nice wave that comes downwards. There's a big one that's like swooping up like this. Oh, that is fun. I'm having so much fun with his hair. And there's a lot up here. 
hair is such an important part of people's identities, you guys. I mean, my hair is not that dramatic. I'm just like, ugh, what can I do to just never have to style it? But I know for some people, it's like it really does define a lot who they are. And it does define the shape and what they look like. And so hair is not a small thing, guys, in a portrait. It's a very important part. And that's why you cannot leave it until the last minute. It is not something that you can say, oh, I'll do that when I'm done with everything. It doesn't work that way. In fact, I'm doing it the opposite way. I'm making the hair before I do the face. And does everybody see it already looks more like him? Not because I did a great job, but because I drew the hair. <laughs> like just because you add the hair, it already feels more like him. And so it's a, a good little trick for you guys to follow. Oh, I love doing this messy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's, I gotta really work this up down here because this is like dark in the back. And let's give it some more body, especially the, the ear is like very hidden. So I'm just gonna block all that in like that. And he needs a little more body up here because I feel like there's a big chunk here that comes out a lot. So I'm trying to just get that in. Okay, now my arm hurts, that's a good sign. And I'm not gonna do tons here, I'm gonna come back to it, but for now, I think at the very least I got this one. And maybe, let's darken up this stroke because he's got this other one that just sort of loops like this. Okay, and maybe a little bit more drama in this section. And then this down here, let's get some good shadows. I don't want to cover everything here because there actually is quite a bit of highlight in that area. So I'm just going to leave it for now. There, there's definitely more that needs to be done, but I think I got to move on because I'm getting a little too excited <laughs> about his hair. Okay. Yeah, so this is all, so there's highlights here. I should make this more dramatic too. Actually, this is really dark. Look at that. Because you know what? There's a cast shadow here, guys. Well, okay, look at this. This is really dark. This is the hair. And then this is the cast shadow. Does everyone see that? That's a cast shadow that's being made by his hair. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, I really want to work on the hair more, but I really should not because there's so much other stuff that needs to get worked on. But I feel better about the likeness, even though I told you guys I don't care, I totally do. So <laughs> it, it is important to me to a degree. I don't think it's as important as it is for some people, but for me, it, it just, it helps bulk up the portrait a little bit more. Okay, I lied, I'm working on the hair more. Okay, I just, I really, really need the dark. The dark is not, and you know something? He's got even more hair back here. So I'm actually sort of missing a lot of the volume back here. Oh, geez. All right, that's a little bit better. Okay, Benedict, you get in there. We got to give you something down here though, because you know what? Some of the value structures are not working very well because if I don't show the darkness of his suit, it does sort of mess with things. Okay, so let's, I, I so wanna work on this, but I gotta work on this because this has to fall into place. And this section, I'm not gonna spend that much time on it, but I just wanna make sure it gets addressed because if it doesn't get addressed, it becomes a real issue. And then it actually becomes a problem because it's not there. Sometimes things not being there, it's worse than if you, draw it poorly. Like I'd, I'd rather draw his tie badly than have it just not be there. I think having it not be there is a lot worse. It's a lot more distracting. Okay. Now I feel like watching this episode. This was a good episode. The whole thing where he made that really awkward speech was so good. Oh my God. <laughs> now I'm like out of crayons. Sheesh. Okay. Let's switch crayons and let's really just let it rip. Who else is drawing so much that you flicked your crayon to the other side of the room? Tell me in the chat. 
if you're one of those crazy people like me that does stuff like that okay let's get in this is pretty grayish so i'm not going to do too much i do want to do a little bit here and then does everybody see how this is white and by comparison his skin tone is is darker so you actually want to darken this a little bit that's a comparison like people might say, okay, he's a pretty fair skinned person. But when you put his skin tone next to white, it's actually the skin tone is darker. Okay. And now here I'm going to put a shadow on this side. Okay. So does everybody see how the lighting is consistent? Even down here, here's the highlight. Here's the shadow. Okay. Now I totally want to do more back here. And I need to do more back here at some point, but I'm going to move on because I feel like I'm ignoring this whole section in the center. Okay, let's go back in. And I'm going to try to like step back a little bit more because I feel like I, I don't know, I feel like I sort of lost the structure of the face. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go in and I'm going to get really aggressive with his bony structures. Let's make them real dark and real dramatic. And you know, I'm sorry, Benedict, you might end up looking really scary after this, <laughs> but that's okay. That's fine. It's all in the name of our education. You being humiliated. <laughs> Although can you guys imagine what his life must be like? Oh my God, I feel really bad for him. Like if you Google Benedict Cumberbatch, like one of the first things that pops up is Benedict Cumberbatch's wife. Like that sucks for him. Like, ugh, I feel bad for his wife. That must be really hard to like live that existence. Oh my God. Okay. And I know that people are like, oh, well they brought it upon themselves. I'm like, I don't think so. I think that it's just part of, God, that industry it must be so hard. I just cannot imagine. Okay. Like I just can't imagine the privacy issues that must come along with being so hot and white and male. <laughs> okay, things just got really dramatic, guys. Oh my God. All right, you need more cheekbone. You need more eye socket. Here we go. Let's really start to dig it in. Now, I know some of you guys probably think I'm overdoing it, but you know what? You have to. You can't be calm about this type of thing have to let it rip. See, now I'm like eating up all my crayons. So I got to get another one. And what I always do, if you guys miss this part of it, is I always unpeel all of the paper around it because then I can really use the crayon as a piece of drawing material and not just draw at the tip. If you draw at the tip, it's really, really limiting. So, okay, here we go. I probably will go in and soften some of these areas but for now i'm not worrying about it so much because i really want this form to come that's what it is guys it's a search for form where is the form how are you going to show the form that's the important thing here that's what we're looking for okay so see these pockets let's make these way more dramatic and i think somebody said earlier they were asking about skin textures and how to make the skin look more realistic a lot of it is in layering so you guys can see i am doing multiple passes of the tone now see how this looks too dramatic it looks too dramatic because this is too light so look at what i'm going to do now we're going to darken this whole side because this whole side of his face is in shadow and this is, for me, what really groups the sh shading, makes it a little bit more congruent. It's all relative. So sometimes if you think something is not looking good or you're like, oh, that's too light, that's too dark, you don't fix the thing that's the problem. You fix the thing that's around the problem. That can actually get you better results. All right, now this is starting to get somewhere. It's still not great. It's still not where I would like it to be, but at least it's more dramatic. This, I really, I chickened out in this area and I, I have to just go. I just really have to go with it. And I, I think it's too small. I think I might have to change the size, but again, I'm not trying to get hung up on those details, guys. 
that does not matter. And I do want something that's more dramatic than the photo. If I wanted to make the photo, I just take a picture. I just, you know, download it. It's a lot faster. So let, let's really heighten this, actually. That's what I think I'm going to do. My response to this is let's make this more dramatic than it actually is. So that means this like weird crease thing here that's by his eye. We're going to make it more muscular than it actually is. And we're going to work on this eye some more because I sort of lost it back there. Make it a little rounder at the bottom like this. Like this is all layers. This is just one layer on top of another. Let's jump back here, make this darker. And it's just, this is so flat looking in the photo. It's driving me crazy. Oh, well. Okay, and I'm gonna add a little bit of hair over here because I think this is really hard to see. So the hair will help me um, get this looser and looking better. Because now I have something to compare it against. Okay, and then this should be more simple so we can see the shapes a little bit better. So a lot of this, guys, it's like trying to get the parts to be together. And that's where the grouping that I was talking about. Okay, so this nostril, now I'm gonna really darken it a lot, make it very dramatic, really accentuate it. And then I'm also gonna darken this, okay? Cause he's got this shadow that gets more dramatic here. It gets very dramatic here. And maybe bulk up some of that. This is less dramatic, so I'm gonna cut back on this. His fulcrum needs a lot of work, so let's give his fulcrum something that's a little bit more dramatic, like this. And I lost the lip. The lip totally disappeared, so let's bring it back. Like I said, darken that, darken this. So this really is layers, you guys. It's like putting one layer of shadow over another. And right now I'm gonna to try to even this out because my marks got really uneven there. And I lost his beautiful neck. So let's make his neck more slender. And his ear got funky. So let's put in this shadow underneath the ear. And I, I do wanna add a little bit of the interior of the ear too. I mean, I, I'm not doing a great job of it right now, but I just want to stick it somewhere so it's not totally empty. And I'm going to just darken that whole section. Oof, okay, let's get that darker too up here. So does everybody see how the pacing of a drawing, it changes? You think you're done being all aggressive, but actually you're not. So let me get the fulcrum better. And let's really go to town on this lip. Because this lip is not very well articulated. And something really dramatic underneath the mouth, like this. And let's really work on the chin. The chin, I was ignoring it for a very long time because I was trying to do some of the more refined stuff. Okay, I think I did too much on the chin, but that's okay. Here's the cast shadow. And as I said earlier, this is the form shadow. So that's the real difference is that cast shadows have very harsh edges. They tend to be very graphic looking. Form shadows are not like that. Form shadows are very soft. And so that's what you're getting there. Okay, let's bring his jawbone back because his jawbone totally disappeared in the process. more layered. Okay, now things are starting to get more substantial. I still don't feel great. And you know what, I might do another 20 minute, 20 minutes on this one, because I feel like I'm getting there, but it, it's still, still pretty shaky in a couple spots. And you guys can tell me if you want to see me work on this more. Or if you think I'm done, and I should move on but I'm feeling like I want to work on this. Not, not because I'm trying to like, you know, <laughs> score points with Benedict, <laughs> but just because as an artist, I, I just feel like I want to do it. Plus there's something great to me. Like one of the reasons I like the drawing streams 
is that I don't feel any pressure to like do amazing work. I mean, I want to do work that doesn't embarrass me, but I think what matters more is that I, I can just draw to draw. And really guys, if you can think about your drawings that way, that's going to help you a lot. That way you don't feel so much pressure to just be great all the time. I mean, who can be great all the time? Benedict Cumberbatch can be great all the time. He just has to show up. He doesn't have to do anything and he's great. <laughs> Not a lot of people can show can do that. It's true though. I mean, I work with this actress once. She's very active in the Boston theater scene. And she really was one of those people is like, she'd just enter a room and you just knew she was there. Like, I think some people just have that inherent charisma and you can't replicate it. It's like, you have it or you don't. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe one of you guys in here is in theater and can correct me otherwise. But that's just sort of the feeling that I get from the people I have worked with in those areas. Okay, I've lost his eye socket. Okay, guys, let's see how I'm doing. I'm gonna come back into the chat. So let me switch over to my talk scene. All right, let's see what you guys are saying. I'll chat with you for a little bit. And then I have a feeling I am going to do another 20 minutes and then call it a day. So let me scroll back up and see what you guys are saying. Okay. Nikki says, I was watching TV at first, but cut it off for a second, then started buffering, watching on my phone now. Hmm. Sounds like people have a few internet things. Solar Starfish says, who needs exercise when you've got art? Exactly. Margaret, drawing on charcoal paper is a workout. You, you really do have to, I think, work a lot harder to get yourself there. And drawing is physically demanding. It's a physical exercise. It's not in your fingers. People think drawing is in your fingers. It's not. It goes all the way up into your shoulders, into your neck. Really, really important. Chloe says, they did the 100 heads challenge, helped me a lot on quick sketches and proportions. Guys, there's no way you can do Jordan's 2500 challenge and not get better. It's guaranteed, but you gotta stick with it. You can't do it for two weeks and then complain that it's not better. You have to actually do the whole thing from beginning to end. Solar Starfish says you can humiliate anyone in art form and claim it's for the purpose of education, including myself. <laughs> you know, you guys also, the other thing about getting older is when you've taught in classrooms, as long as I've taught, you start to get really desperate to get people to learn stuff. And you're just like, okay, if I dance and you guys will learn it, fine. <laughs> and that's why I started all of these, um, Benedict and white men's dreams because my students were saying to me, they're like, you know, when you talked about his sternocleidomastoid, I remembered that. And I was like, good, if it means I act like an idiot and you learn something, then I'm just gonna keep doing it because I just have no shame at this point. I'm old, I don't care, whatever. <laughs> Let's see, G Thang says, I've been making ballpoint pen sketches, always overdo it compared to charcoal, becomes hard to see the values as I go too dark too quickly. I have the exact same thing. And the thing is, I'm so aware of it that it's kind of lame that I still do it. But I think a lot of this has to do with, we all have tendencies. We all have certain things that we tend to do. And if you don't remind yourself on an active basis, you forget. And so when I sit down and I draw the figure, I have to actively tell myself, don't draw the legs too short, because I always do that. I've been doing that since I was 20, and I have not worked that out of my system. So it's like you almost need a list of reminders to give yourself. Yeah, Solar Starfish says, since learn to appreciate lighter shades. Let's see, G Thang says, I posted on my Instagram, got over twice as many likes as my oil paintings. My charcoal piece got only a quarter as many likes. It's made me realize that sketchy looks are super popular. You know, that's true, G Thang. That, that's an Instagram thing. And actually, we definitely have videos on how to use Instagram, some of the reasons Instagram can be toxic. But one thing I have noticed is that people don't tend to like the really refined, finished, polished, long-term pieces you make on Instagram. They like the crummy sketches that I did of ducks 
I did these really crappy sketches of ducks. They were like five second sketches. I'm not even joking. There were recent posts on my Instagram and they got so many more likes than I get on stuff that's super polished. I really think that's a platform thing. I don't think it's necessarily because those duck sketches are better than the other things. It's just people react to it. They can relate to it a lot more. I mean, those duck sketches, I would never show those in a show. I mean, that would be really lame in a professional art show, but on Instagram, it's totally fine. Okay, let's see what's going on. Nikki says, I thought it was a philtrum on the top lid, the fulcrum on the lower. I was always told this is the fulcrum, but maybe I'm wrong about that too. I have definitely been wrong about other things. And Karen says, I agree the charisma is very strong with some actors. It's an amazing quality, especially in person. Well, I can't speak about Benedict in person. I just imagine if he, <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's see. Somebody is killing their arm, Jade Leaf. Talk about a workout. And let's see. Alice DB says their finger is also hurting, but because it's pencil. Okay, yeah, pencil will definitely do that to you. Rupesh says, I learned so much for you. I learned that drawing is messy is actually what helps it get better faster. Yeah, guys, don't be so unrealistic and just want everything to look perfectly great immediately in two seconds. It's not going to happen. I mean, it takes time. You got to do a lot of bad stuff. Nikki says, there's really a point when you get over 40, when you stop caring what people think happened for me too. Guys, it's the best part about getting old. I mean, I know a lot of people talk about, oh, when you get older, there are all these things. Yes, there are a lot of things that I have given up on, like losing weight. Like I used to worry about that. And now I'm like, dude, I'm eating my ice cream. I don't care. And yeah, there are so many great things about getting older because you just are like, I don't care. Like some of the stuff my college students really stress about, I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> it's fine. My life is great. <laughs> really cool. Okay, guys, I'm going to do another 20 minutes. Feel free to stick around because I just want to see where this is going to go. I have not done a longer term portrait drawing in a really long time because most of my stuff is not straight portraiture anymore. Most of the time I have an idea. And actually the work I've been doing recently on my Instagram, which you can see is about all of my horrific gum problems. If you're squeamish, you probably don't want to read my captions, but I've been doing stuff about that, which interests me, but I never get to really just sit and make a portrait. I do that for demos in class, but I never finish them because I'm working with students and everything. So I'm just going to do this. Alexandri Diana says, I'm cheating with an eraser, but definitely having fun. <laughs> My Benedict actually looks like the real thing. Ooh, I'm so excited. You know what though? Using an eraser, it's not cheating, okay? And someday I will do a stream with charcoal so I can show you guys more how to use that. If you're curious right now, there is also a stream right now. It's already online of me drawing this female back where I do use an eraser pretty aggressively and I do use graphite powder. So if you guys wanna see a little bit of my eraser technique, watch this stream that has this drawing, the drawings in the thumbnail, but I am gonna do more. I'm just not doing it today because this is the technique I decided to focus on. Maria, the challenge, it's in the Discord. So if you guys are not in the Discord, there's a channel called 2500 Challenge and Jordan is in there coaching people on how to do this. And I really recommend you guys drop in. You want to get better at drawing, do Jordan's challenge because he's going to bust your butt, you guys. <laughs> and the thing is, like, Jordan's so nice about it that you're going to think he's, like, not busting your butt, but he really is. So it's it's very manipulative. Although it's not when it comes to Jordan. If it were me, yeah. <laughs> I always have, like, sneaky stuff. Jordan is, like, just super nice and chill. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, let's get back. I'm going to do another 20 minutes. And let's just see where this goes. Right now, I just feel like the drawing is so much about tone. And I just, I do want to show you guys that number one, I can sort of do line a little bit, but also where that line is actually going to go. So, okay, let me get set up and I'll get my reference photo and we're going to do another 20 minutes. And this really will be the last one because uh, I think I gotta feed myself at some point. Okay, let's see. Okay, Benedict, I hope I can do you justice. Okay, 
Now I'm really going to slow down. And I'm going to be decisive. Even though part of me doesn't want to be, I'm going to be. And I actually, I think this is the one where I'm really going to press hard because I really need to be decisive about some things like this uh, eyelid. I'm actually going to finally put it in there. I've been putting it off, but I think it's time. So, and I hope you guys will see as I draw this, what I mean when I say that you don't need those details in the beginning and that if you do a good job setting everything up, you could just drop them in, into place. They'll, they'll just fall into place. It's like if you guys make cupcakes and you put sprinkles on the top, you, you just put them on. It's not a big deal. It should not be a big deal. When you guys go in and you start adding all this stuff, it should not be a big deal. Like if you struggle to place the eyes or to place the eye sockets, that means you didn't do a good job setting things up. So you have to start to think about it that way. Okay, let's group things a little bit more. Make that more dramatic. Because he's got a sophisticated <laughs> set of psychomatic arches. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. We really need some structure in the lip. So I'm going to get really harsh and geometric down here. Because I, I think what's happening right now, this, this happens all the time, is the drawing's getting really smeary. And I don't like that. I do want it to be a little harsher. So I'm trying to put in marks that have more defined edges. And actually, I have not worked on this other side of his upper lip. So let's get that going. Because that is definitely an area that was suffering. And this has to be a lot softer. I feel like this did not get the fleshy quality that I wanted it to have. So I'm going to try to block some of that in. This too, I think, disappeared a little bit. So I'm going to bring it back, try to get it a little bit rounder like that. And I will post this on Instagram and on Discord later because I can already tell on my YouTube screen that the, the lighting's weird. And so it's not, I mean, it's, it's the best I could do given the equipment that I have. But I'm just saying that probably what you guys are seeing on screen is not super accurate to what I'm seeing. So I'll show it to you later when it's on Instagram. Okay. Oh, I did not give him his eyelid. Okay, Benedict, here, here's what you get. There you go. At least he's not on Instagram. Guys, I would die if he was on Instagram. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably good he's not on Instagram. Although Hugh Jackman's on Instagram and he's so cute. Except for those dorky glasses he's been wearing lately. I don't like his new glasses. It's okay. It's fine. Everything else makes up for it. Okay, let's get, he needs more. The, the eyeshadow, the, not the eyeshadow, the eyebrow still not great in this area starting to get some of the form i'm looking for i mean if there's any way to describe to you guys my drawing process i really try to sculpt it i try to sculpt the figure that's what i'm looking to do i'm not really looking to do anything but that and so i do think about it from a very sculptural point of view okay and then there's a little bit of form around that bit of the lip and then let's do a little bit more under here because this is actually a lot more complex than I had it I think I simplified it too much in that area okay and you know something guys I was telling you earlier that I was having kind of a rough week for a lot of different reasons and I feel better I really do like after just sitting down and just drawing and hanging with you guys I, I already feel like i'm in a better mood so thank you for being here it makes all the difference because i could totally just draw by myself i mean I, I don't have to turn on live but it's like having that community is really nice have, knowing that there are people out there rooting for you it makes a big difference so yeah because if you guys go back and you read i posted it on instagram and it's also on twitter my announcement about leaving academia and how that was not fun for me that decision was not easy. So yeah. Okay, let's do a little bit. Ooh, he looks really upset now. I think I made him more upset than he looks in the picture. That's okay. You know what I think I should do? I think I should watch Sherlock after this. In the middle of the day, it's a beautiful day outside. I think I should just do that. That would be a great way to spend my afternoon. And I think I should do it guilt-free too. 
is usually I guilt myself for not working enough. Even though I know I'm crazy, I already work too much, but I love it. I love working on this. This is so much fun for me. Okay. All right, we gotta take a better look up here. I feel like I'm starting to lose some of the lighting. So while I, I'm not feeling great, well, hmm, actually I take it back. <gasps> Sternoclotomastoid, I didn't even see it. Here it is, Sternoclotomastoid, here we go. See this? It's a little confusing because there's this cast shadow that comes across, but he does have a sternoclotomastoid. And I think I made it a little bit darker than it should be, but whatever. At least he has one. Sternoclotomastoid, which is this muscle that comes down. We have not covered it yet in my anatomy lectures. I will get back to that. It's just those anatomy lectures take so long to prepare. I think on average, the anatomy lectures are about 80 slides. So just picture making a custom slide and each one needs a diagram and just the right angle of Benedict. <laughs> it takes time. You gotta find those images, you gotta make the charts. So I don't know that I'm gonna be able to do them until I settle into Utah again, because Utah's coming up sooner than I think it is. So I need to get ready. So you guys will see that there is gonna be a slight shift in programming. We're still gonna be around, but we won't be able to do lectures that are very slide heavy. That's the difference. We'll, we'll try to pivot to subjects that are a little bit more discussion based. So that way we can still go, but I can also do stuff on the road and not have to prepare so much. So there'll be a shift in content there, but when I'm back and I'm all settled, we'll, we'll be back to normal. So don't worry, everything will get back to normal at some point. Okay, let's fix, uh, his lip needs a little more. I, I feel like there's a little bit of a delineation here, the edge of his lip. And then this should be more sharp. Let's make that a little sharper, like that. Okay. I feel like I did, I feel like he doesn't have enough neck. Who knows? Let's just fix that. Okay, I really wanna work up here because I feel like the lighting is terrible. So I'm gonna just look for abstract shapes. I'm not going to try to draw hair by hair because that's ridiculous and I hate that. So what I am going to do, though, is pull out certain highlights. Like here, there's a, a big chunk of highlight. There's a big shape here. And I'm pressing hard, guys, because I really, really need the contrast. And then here, there's like a couple strokes that come out this way. And I do want a softer transition between the hair and the cast shadow. And I'm gonna to try to group it all together. And this, I kind of lost this hair. Let's put it back. I think I had it and then I like colored over that area and then it disappeared. So let's just put that in again, like this. All right, yeah, I, I really, really want the light because I feel like I did this other drawing of him for the art dare last month. And I really messed up the hair. Like I did not pay attention to the lighting. And that was like, that was it. That was the end of that drawing. Once I stopped paying attention to the shadows and the highlights, it was not a good look. So I'm really trying to fix that this time around. Yeah, and this hair is like, it gets really dense up here and then it gets lighter. Like hair is very, very sculptural, you guys. It's just, you gotta be aware of it. That That's the difference. A lot of people aren't, thinking about hair that way. They think about it as individual hairs and that's when you get screwed. It's when you're not taking that under consideration. Okay, so here, let's try to show the texture of the hair as well. All right, that is starting to look a little bit better, but I still need to treat this almost architecturally. I know that sounds really strange because it's hair but you really do have to look at it as a structure. And if you don't, it, it really can fall into like total mush, which you don't want. And I wanna throw in a couple marks like that. Okay, there's a really like giant lunge of hair that comes this way. And this one, I'm gonna really try to define the lighting a lot better. Like this. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there, Benedict. It's, it's okay, I'm gonna do it. 
Oh, what is he doing, by the way? Somebody look up. What's his next thing? Because I really have no idea. Although he wasn't that, wasn't he in that like 1918 movie that was like nominated for an Oscar? I was not paying attention to the, I mean, I never do. But was he good in that movie? Because I'm like, is that worth it? Or is he just like in a helmet the whole time? Because <laughs> if he's in a helmet the whole time, I don't know if I want to watch it. Also, everybody is just like a little too good looking in that movie to be a soldier. I'm like, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> that just doesn't work. All right. I need, oh, shoot. Okay. Wait, slow down, look, observe, find those patches. Okay. Here's a patch. Here's a patch. I'm just wondering, do you guys have the same inner monologue <laughs> that I have? Is it like a fight? with yourself all the time. I'm just curious. Basically what I'm saying is, are you all as crazy as I am? That's, that's the real question. I'm not really asking about the inner monologue. Okay. Now some of these hairs go up like that. So what I want to do here, I want to give these a little more body, more direction, and a little more texture. Okay, and now I, I do believe I should head over here some more. I know there's only eight minutes left, but I, I just, I really want the hair to work. I think because I feel like I failed in the last drawing I did of him with the hair. Okay, let's get a little more highlight. See, th th there's like a chunk of highlight here that comes across. And if I head back, okay, now this really has to go. This really has to be dark. And so does this. Let's show the strokes. See, it's like, because I've worked on this so much now, I really can just go to town. So let's give him something more substantial back here. And maybe pull out a couple, there's a couple of these like stray hairs at the top that I really want to emphasize. that and really dig in here ow okay now i'm in pain it's my fault though i could draw like a, a wimp that that would be easier my hands wouldn't hurt so much but i'm not gonna do it it's not fun for me to draw that way there's got to be a bite in the process <sighs> All right, I think a little bit more up here. This should be more dramatic, actually. This like delineation of where his hair begins, I think should be a little stronger. Okay, let's get back in here. I have six minutes. Let's see if we can really resolve some of the stuff here. I, I really, this hair is, this eyebrow is still bothering me. I feel like I want it more dramatic. And maybe there's something about this that's not great. I mean, see here, now I'm starting to get a little fixated on some things, which I don't really like, but it's sort of necessary at this point. And you, you sort of have to. I mean, there's sort of no way around it. Okay. Hmm. Jawbone. That's what he needs. Jawbone got really unstable. Not good. Okay. Now I'm using the tip. The tip is actually really helpful when you're trying to make things smoother and a little bit more consistent because the tip gives you control. That's the difference. When you draw with the tip, you know better what the crown is going to do. It's a lot more predictable, but sometimes it's not good in the beginning. Sometimes you don't want that. Yeah, I think the neck needs more. Something's funky. I, I think I like, uh, I don't know. I did something with the neck, but whatever. That's not what we're here for. You guys want an accurate picture, just download it. <laughs> It'll be way faster. And let's do a little bit more here. Cause I do want to show this like plane that comes across the nose a little bit better. Let's get his nostril a little bit more dramatic. Again, noses are weird. It's not your fault. It's not Benedict's fault. The nose looks strange. I think we all think it looks strange no matter who we are. Okay, and then it's sort of hard. Like I can't tell if there's actually hair back there, but you know what? I think I'm gonna 
add hair back there anyway because it's going to accentuate this contour and no one's gonna know like who cares all right let's get this in like that okay see that then sort of frames that part of his hair a little bit better in my opinion i can see it more i'm gonna group some of this okay we're, we're getting there almost there and i think i just want to like do another pass over everything actually this eye probably needs some more work it's, it's weird i i can't really understand from the photo what exactly is going on there it's like really weird the way the shadows are organized it's, it's not easy to figure out this is where i need to see you in person benedict if i could see you in person i would know what was happening structurally with your eye socket i would understand better what your eyelids were doing and all of that would contribute to the art educational experience that my my audience is experiencing right now. It's all in the name of art. Ed. That's what we got to do. We got to get them on the art education thing. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not that glamorous. Like nobody, people don't tend to give millions of dollars to art education. It's just not one of those things that people generally do. You don't really read about that. Like you always read about people giving money to like classical symphony orchestras and don't get me wrong they need it too i mean all these arts organizations need it it's just i feel like art education is just not very glamorous for a lot of people okay yeah let's let's give him a little bit this eye is sort of disappearing a little bit so i feel like this upper lid could use something more dramatic and then maybe his he got too soft did I lose this? I think this needs to come back. This crease of his mouth. That's maybe too much, but you know what? I'm going to leave it because I'd rather the drawing be too much than not enough. It is better to me when the drawing is overstating things than when it's understating things because you can always pull back. You can always do less on your next drawing, but when it comes to actually getting things across, it's better to overdo it, if you ask me. Okay, and actually he does have like a little bit of, see the, the lip, the skin in the lip is so delicate and I gotta show that. So this is like what somebody was asking me earlier about showing the realistic skin texture. And a lot of that is just being really specific about that form. I think it's, I think this is too small. I think I made his jaw too small. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Even at this late stage, there's time for stuff like this. You just got to make time for it. I think that's the difference. Yeah, his, oh my God, I've made his chin like way too small this whole time. Okay, let's make it a little bit bigger then. This should help. Of course, now his collar <laughs> is not in a great place. I have to like redo that. But I do think that makes things a little bit better. It does move this stuff around. But I think in general, I underestimated the scale of his chin because he actually, he does have a pretty big chin. All right, so let's redo the jawbone. Jawbone should be more dramatic. Let's pull it down more like that. And then this evens it out a lot better. Let's pull this up. See, this, this whole area got way darker than I think it should have, but I'm doing it as a reaction to moving this down. So that's how you guys can like manipulate and shift things. Like even when you mess up, like it's okay. Like I'm not trying to make it perfect. So as long as it, it works within the context of the drawing, that matters more than trying to get the drawing just like the photo. Cause you can drive yourself crazy doing that. I think that's not a very fun way to draw. And I'm not so sure that it makes the drawing better necessarily. Oh, 29 seconds. I think I'm just about done though. I'm, I'm feeling that like I'm winding down a little bit and that I am starting to pick. So I feel like that's about right in terms of time. Okay, just a little bit more with the tip to even out some of these shading areas. Okay, that's it guys. Let me see in the chat what you guys are saying. So let me go back to my scene. And I will be posting this on Instagram and on Discord. 
in a little bit so you guys can get a more accurate photo of what that actually looks like. Let's see. Big Hen says, I finally understand why several thumbnails are necessary. Hard to get every element right the first pass. Go away and then look again. You'll see what you missed the last time. Very cool. Yeah, this is like my record, isn't it? I don't think I've done a stream that was this long before. But honestly, I find it a lot more satisfying because I, I really felt when I was finishing that drawing that I was like in the mode. Some of the other streams that were shorter, I felt like I cut it prematurely. And so while this feels like it's more work because it's longer, it doesn't because it feels more right, I think, in a lot of ways. Let's see what other people are saying. Lisa says, two teachers donated to our local library for education, which includes art. They were entrepreneurs who were very successful. Oh, that's great. I'm always happy to hear about stories like that because as somebody who just cares so much about art education, it's hard to get people behind you on it when I think it's easy to justify math and science for obvious reasons. And art is just a tougher argument, I think, for a lot of people. Diego Garcia says, I was doing an ink wash drawing, saw you were live. I got why I'm struggling with the facial features. My basic structure wasn't really that strong. Now I'm paying the consequences. <laughs> you know what? We've all been there, Diego. I still do it. It's extremely common. But really, guys, I mean, I think this slide says it all. It's everything around the eyes, nose, and mouth. That is what's going to save you. It's not the actual features that is really, really going to save you. That's the most important thing. Let's see. Luis says, my mind shuts down when I draw. I feel like I don't think anything weird. I think for some of us, that's a good thing. I mean, for me, it's like a break from all the stuff that I'm dealing with on a regular basis. And let's see. Sabrina says, I'll never get mine to look like the picture itself. But you know what? It doesn't matter, Sabrina. I know that that can feel like a measure of worth, but you just have to think about the process and what you did to get there and keep practicing. And at some point you are gonna do some pieces that do line up with your goals and your expectations. You can't do it that much and not that have that happen. It's just that to get there, it takes a while. You're gonna to have to do a lot of drawings you're not that happy with for that to happen. Let's see what else people are saying. Lacey Stardust says, what about open mouths? Action shots of people talking are so difficult. I think with those, it, it's even more important that you do the stuff around. Like you have to look at like how the shapes around the mouth, like how this part of the mouth is going to stretch. If somebody makes their mouth really wide, you have to look at the tension that happens. Because like right now, this image of Benedict in Imitation Game, like his mouth is pretty relaxed. Like he's not stretching it or anything like that. But in some of the other images where his mouth is big, it's like you look at the tension that happens around the chin. And if you work on that, that can really help quite a bit. And Maria says, I think it's more effective to justify art by just saying live without it and all the aspect that it's in your lives. Yep. I mean, if you eliminate art from your life, you're not going to have a lot left over when you think about what's really out there and how much you guys interact with anything that has to do with art and design. It's just, it's really hard to get your average person to think about it that way. Ross Trun says, love your videos. You're 15 years old. Working in colored pencil, I can pretty much replicate a photo, but it just takes me so long. How do I cut down on the time? Ross Trum, I don't know if you do gesture drawings, but I think these quick drawings I'm showing you now by Kathy Kollowitz, learn how to do these. Like if you can do good gesture drawings, you're going to be faster. Because when I was in high school, I never did gesture drawings. I just copied photos and made them realistic. And they, again, like you, took forever and ever and ever. But now that I'm doing gesture drawings, I can whip it out really fast. So work on your gesture drawings. I think that would be a good way to do that. Yes, I know the chin needs a tweak. I know it's not perfection like he is in real life. But anyway, you guys, come hang out with us on Discord because we always have really cool conversations there, really nerdy conversations for the most part, and subscribe to our channel and join the ArtProf family because we are the best. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who make all of this possible. Thank you to all of you guys 
for jumping in the stream, for hanging out with me. You guys inspire me as much as hopefully I inspire you. It's mutual. This is a two-way street. This is not just me talking to you. It's absolutely an exchange. And I love it, guys. So everybody stay safe. I'll see you next time.